<sighs> Hello, I'm Francis Bourgeois. I'm a train spotter and now I'm also an author. I'm here to break down some clips of trains in TV shows and movies. We're going to look at a clip of Thomas the Tank Engine. And there is a um, perception of me being a, a Thomas the Tank Engine fan. But unfortunately, as I'm someone who loves realism, uh, it's not really the case. Once, an engine attached to a train was afraid of a few drops of rain. Immediately, I'm more of a fan of this than the more modern Thomas the Tank Engine, because this is actually a model scene, whereas the Thomas the Tank Engine nowadays is, um, is animated. So there is a degree of realism in this one. Realistic steam puffing as well. It went into a tunnel and squeaked through its funnel and wouldn't come out again. It wouldn't have stopped that fast. The rain will spoil my lovely green paint and red stripes, he said. Sounds a bit like the Flying Scotsman. That's going to cause some wheel flats on Thomas's wheels. Eventually, even the fat controller gave up. They took up the old rails and built a wall in front of himself. And we couldn't get out of the tunnel anymore. I mean, considering this is a model, like it's, it's a lot more satisfying than I would have thought before watching a Thomas the Tank Engine video. Like the particular stills of them building up the wall and stuff like that. You know, I wonder if that modeler has a, a model railway of their own, or the modelers that were modeling this scene. He wondered if he would ever be allowed to pull trains again. But I think he deserved his punishment, don't you? It can't just stop there. <laughs> so Henry is just left to rust. It's somewhat refreshing to have an ending like that, to be honest, because especially with kid, kids' TV, it's like, oh, and then Henry was um, freed, miraculously. But, you know, Henry's just going to be turned into scrap metal, probably, with this. At least from my experience, I feel like trains have personalities and each class of train has, you know, its own kind of quirks and its own kind of expressions, really, which I, th I imagine is kind of really owed to by the sounds and, like, the functionality and, like, the clunks and the tick -tick -tick. I remember as a toddler just being obsessed with seeing everything going on outside the window whilst seeing the sort of trains pull into the station getting on the trains. I'd give uh, this Thomas the Tank Engine clip an 8 out of 10 because actually from a modelling perspective it's very well modelled. When modelling something you need to have a, a sense of realism um, and I think it's quite impressive but Thomas the Tank Engine in general isn't very realistic um, as the locomotives have talking faces. So that's so that's what brings it down. So this is now uh, Harry Potter, the Hogwarts Express. G N E R. Can you tell me how to how to get onto the platform? <laughs> Not to worry, dear. It's Ron's first time to Hogwarts as well. Now all you've got to do. I think I can hear a class ninety one in the background departing. It sounds like. Hogwarts <sighs> as well. Now all you've got to do is walk straight at the wall between platforms 9 and 10. Mark four carriages, so that would have been a class 91 with a DVT on the end. I think both of them. Yeah, both Mark fours. So that steam locomotive, they've painted it in the LMS colours, which is correct for the for the terminus, London King's Cross, but it's actually uh, an ex-GWR locomotive, so 
the it should if if they're using that locomotive it would have actually have been in uh, dark green but it's an LMS kind of burgundy excuse me arc one carriage yeah. everywhere else is full not at all you can't really get anything more sociable really when it comes to a train environment to be honest like you're you're facing against people that you might not necessarily know on the same journey so it's just so so much more inviting of, of conversation rather than kind of like like all facing one way with headphones in but mark one carriages you know you can get the conversations flowing you can actually uh, replicate the the journey if you go on the jacobite steam train so you pass over the Glenfinnan viaduct that's on like a corner, the part in the film where I think they're, they're in a flying car or something and they're getting, the, the train comes around. I'd give the Hogwarts Express um, an eight out of 10. They did go through a wall, but you need to get, have some, some flexibility, otherwise, you know, things can be boring. So this is Stand By Me um, and Outrunning a Train. You can often um, hear tracks hissing before the trains are even in sight, so I, that, I think that's quite good. Train! Oh shit! Move it, man! Go on, move it! Get up first! Damn it! The American horns are so much better. Whistles, rather. I think by the time the drivers would have would have spotted them on the bridge, it doesn't seem to be that loaded. Probably could have slowed down sufficiently for them to. I mean, haven't seen the outcome yet. <laughs> Must have fancied a dip. I mean, I, I'm I'm gonna probably rate it quite highly because it made me laugh. Yeah, I just thought it was great. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> so this is the wrong trousers. Sounds like techno music at the beginning. <laughs> That's going quick. Um. Yeah, I don't think you could get a model train that goes that fast, um, at least nowadays. I love Wallace and Gromit. I've put um, double O gauge track together before and to fit the, the two kind of opposing fish plates together exactly right is really, really tricky and takes a lot of practice. So hats off to Gromit for that one. Love it. To think that that's kind of all animated is crazy. Amazing how it's all produced. I mean, I don't know how it's all produced, but amazing to think how it is, you know. Yeah, I got my first train set when I was four, which started as like an oval with uh, an 060 pannier tank and some freight wagons and a brake van. I just used to kind of run around and then um, it kind of grew every Christmas and birthday. Um, and by the time I was in my mid-teens, you know, I had a big layout uh, with a station, with shops, houses, um, like a freight depot, and then kind of I was 16 and I decided to sell it all, which is massive, massive regret. But I knew that as soon as I started collecting like model train bits again, it would just be a slippery slope. And then, you know, next thing I'd just have a massive collection again. So I've kind of been holding off until recently. 
accuracy rating well there are lots of kind of impossible things there but I think probably about six out of ten but just in terms of the the laughs the amazing production and how it's all put together like that's a ten a ten for me overall my favorite one would be it's difficult to say because they're they're kind of satisfying for different reasons but I think overall um, the Wallace and Gromit one just because it made me feel good made me laugh and made me feel kind of as young as I as young as I was the sort of last time I sat down and watched Wallace and Gromit thanks for watching you can get my new book The Train Spotter's Notebook in hardback and in audio by clicking the link down below don't forget if you want to see more videos like this, you can click the, the link there to subscribe to Penguin.